can men get pregnant? Mr. Chairman, yes. Okay. <laughs> Just, I want your opinion on this and your answer. Uh, can men get pregnant? Mr. Chairman, no. Thank you. And there was a reason why I asked that question. It's because of our um, culture and, and the idiocy, idiocy that's out there about men getting pregnant, about, uh, you know, what is a woman, define, define a woman, all that stuff. So I thought it was kind of relevant to, to this bill. In fact, I was even thinking about an amendment to ensure that those thoughts are instilled in statute that men cannot get pregnant and if you know, a pregnant man's assaulted, that doesn't have a part of it. But anyway, just wanted to kind of see where you were at on that, but I, I knew you were on the right side, so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for hearing the bill. Yes, sir. Against, Marilyn Rodriguez. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Chair, members, Marilyn Rodriguez with Preso Partners on behalf of our client, the Arizona Coalition to End Sexual and Domestic Violence in opposition to this legislation. Leaving discretion with the courts and prosecutors is in the best interest of survivors of sexual assault, domestic violence, and we strongly encourage a no vote against this legislation, which we believe um, is an attempt to place a greater value on unborn human life than domestic violence victims. Thank you. So, Ms. Roderick, uh, Marilyn, uh, can men get pregnant? Mr. Chairman, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Chair, to that point, and I'm not done. Um, define what, what a woman is, in Mr. your opinion. Relevant, point of order. Thank you very much. Um, it is relevant, and point of order not recognized. I, want, I would like you to answer mm -hmm. that, because you are speaking on behalf of a bill that involves pregnant women, and I would like to get your take on that. Mr. Chairman, I'm speaking, I'm, I'm speaking in opposition to a bill related right. to the domestic violence against people who are pregnant. Against a woman who women. is pregnant. That's in the bill. Not people, woman. Women. So I would like you to explain what, in your definition what a woman is. Mr. Chairman, yeah. there are people who identify Women. as different genders who are capable of getting identify. pregnant. That is my position on this. I am not going to feed more into the bigotry of that question. Okay. Well, thank you. I just want to make a comment of uh, the reason I asked that question is there's two different philosophies in this room regarding this bill, and I think it is relevant to this bill. And I kind of I concur with Senator um, Rogers. And in, in, uh, we, it's a sad day in our in our nation where. You have uh, a bill that's being run that is protecting pregnant women. Um, just a few short years ago, we knew what a woman was. We knew men could not get pregnant. And I still believe they cannot get pregnant. I was called a bigot this morning because of that philosophy. Um, it's, it's, it's insane where we become. And until we continue to push back on the idiocy that's out there as to men getting pregnant, people that cannot define what a woman is, uh, and we, we have to keep telling the truth that God created them male and female, and real men protect real women, period. Um, to start off, as a Secretary of Health and Human Services, can you define for this committee what is a man? You're looking at one. Great. So you are a man. I like that. Can you tell me, can men get pregnant? Uh, unless you know something I don't, uh, I think the answer is pretty obvious. What is that answer, sir? I'm asking you, is there something you know that I don't know that would, that would say that a man Well, I'm asking what you know. Can men get pregnant? I'm not aware of it. OK. Well, um, Mr. Secretary, materials coming from your department, you've referred to mothers as, as birthing persons, replacing that title with... Are, are mothers not persons? Mothers are persons, but it seems to be more inclusive, like you're trying to include another gender in that. I'm all about inclusion, Congresswoman. There you go. Um, so, well, you know, just as a mother of four boys, um, I'm not necessarily offended at that. I am a person, um, but it's just unscientific and absurd um, how, how so? 
to include men in that, if you're going to person? be inclusive, if you're going to be inclusive in birthing persons, yes. Well, well, but, but it seems to me that you're trying Let's back to define up. Can, the term. Reclaiming my time. Can men get pregnant? So then we don't need to include them in this. Mothers are mothers. Moving forward, Mr. Secretary, I want to read for you um, from a document from your office, um, the Office of um, Population Affairs. Um, it says in here, and I quote, Gender affirming care encompasses many facets of health care needs and support. It has been shown to increase positive outcomes for transgender and non-binary children. Mr. Secretary, what is a transgender child? A, a child in America is a child in America, and I hope you and I can love that child just as much as we can. Can you define what a transgender child is? A, a, that's a child in America, and it's an American citizen child who needs the services and love just the way any other child does. Mr. Secretary, do you believe that a child is capable of making life-altering de uh, decisions to maim themselves? So let me, let me just say to you that I don't agree with your premise, but what I will say to you is children know much about themselves and with the help of their- Do you believe that children are capable of making the decision to self-mutilate? Again, I don't necessarily accept the premise well, of Well, Mr. Your Secretary, question. I mean, you have gender affirming care for young people, so this is something that I you have looked over. I don't equate gender affirming care to mutilation. So, if that's where you're going, then you're not going to get the answer you want. So, um, Mr. Mr. Secretary, here, can you um, can you tell me if there have been mastectomies, um, uh, uh, mastectomies, penectomies, or hysterectomies on children? Well, I. I and have taxpayers funded that? So I, I could probably use the help of my wife, who's an OBGYN, who could talk for it, or maybe Dr. Burgess could, could help us out here. For gender-affirming care, to be included in that. I'm sorry, pose the question one more time, please. In this gender-affirming care, Mr. Secretary, have there been tax dollars put forward to fund mastectomies, penectomies, and hysterectomies for sex reassignment purposes for minors with gender dysphoria. So Americans are entitled to receive health care services. If they are entitled to receive any of the services that you just mentioned, then it would be against the law for us to try to deny them that care. So for the record, you favor HHS's funding being able for, to, for sex reassignment for surgeries on minors. I will do everything I can to defend any American, including children, whether or not they fit the categories you have mentioned or not, and if they talk about gender-affirming care, I am there to protect the rights of any American. Mr. Secretary, I want to turn to a different document. Your office released um, uh, this uh, gender-affirming care is trauma-informed care. In this document, you clearly state that gender-affirming care includes puberty blockers hormones and surgeries for minor children. You go on to assure the parent to uh, assure parents that there is no scientifically sound reason to doubt hormones and surgeries are helpful to minor children. You also discuss this in a document that the potential for removing children from their parents is on the table if they're not providing providing gender affirming care. Mr. Secretary, do you think that parents who believe in two genders only should have their children removed from them. Secretary, you, Mr. Secretary, you can answer or respond can, in writing. Her time is expired. I, I can respond very okay. quickly. Congresswoman, I, I believe in supporting and protecting transgender youth. I believe that they, along with their parents and their uh, caregivers, will make the best decisions. And I would really urge that politicians like you stay out of their business. I would urge that children get to stay with their parents. The no woman's time has expired. Uh, the committee. Mr. Chairman, will... may I please have unanimous consent? No, you can't. Consent. No, you may not. We're on a very tight time frame, and there's Enter this into the called. congressional record. So, Dr. Robinson, uh, I noticed in your written testimony you, you said that you use she/her pronouns. You're a medical doctor. What's a woman? It's important for you to understand why I said I use she, her pronouns. Well, I, 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 I understand I, 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 that there I'm explaining, are people. I was explaining why I'm asking the question, but I'd just like you to get an answer to the question. What's a woman? I think it's important that we educate people like you 
about why we're doing the things that we do. And so the reason that I use she and her pronouns is because I understand that there are people who become pregnant that may not identify that way. And I think it is discriminatory to speak to people or to call them in such a way as they desire not to be called. Thanks for that. So question. it's Can important that we respect each individual I person. Are you going to answer my question? Can you answer the question, what's a woman? I'm a woman. And I will ask you, which pronouns do you use? Can you, can you If you provide, tell me that you use she and her pronouns, that, I'm going to answer you. I'm going to call you Mr. Bishop. I'm going to respect you for how you want me to, to address you. I, I'm just saying, so you give me an example of a woman. You say that you are a woman. Can you tell me, otherwise, a, can you tell me what a woman is? Yes, I'm telling you, I'm a woman. Is that as, as, a, as comprehensive a definition as you can give me? That's as comprehensive as a def definition as I, as I will give you today. I because see. I think that it's important that we focus on what we're here for, and it's to talk about access to I abortion see. So you're not interested in answering a question I ask unless, and answering a question that I ask unless it's part of a message you want to deliver. Is that right? I'm sorry. You're because not, I was talking and you were talking yes, at the same I, time. Yes, ma'am. I'm right. I it's my, hear it's you. my time. <laughs> okay, it's my I just time to ask you questions. That's the purpose of it. I ask you to, to uncover things by asking you questions and asking you to respond. So you're not willing to answer a question unless it's part of a message you wish to deliver. Is that correct? Sir, what I was trying to explain to you is that I had a difficult time hearing you since we were talking at the same time. Right, let me just see if I can go to Ms. Arambide. Is that a pretty close approximation of the pronunciation? Arambide. Arambide. Okay. Um, what do you say a woman is? I believe that everyone can identify for themselves. Okay. Um, do, do you believe then that men can become pregnant and have abortions? Yes. Mm. Professor Goodwin, the, uh, the draft opinion says this uh, in part. The court has no authority to decree that an erroneous precedent is permanently exempt from evaluation under traditional stare decisis principles. Adherence to precedent is the norm, but not an inexorable command. If the rule were otherwise, erroneous decisions like Plessy and Lochner would still be the law. Close quote. Professor, isn't that inarguably true? Mustn't it be the case that all prior decisions of the court are subject to reevaluation? Well, it is certainly the case that we have in the legacy of this court, Dred Scott, Plessy v. Ferguson, they fell after Brown v. Board of Education. So the ability to be able to review is important. That's the ability to be able to review. It's another thing when the Supreme Court then strips away a fundamental protection that has been made, particularly given that the justices who may be involved in this leaked draft opinion suggested that they actually respected the precedent and sorry decisis associated with Roe when we were not talking about Plessy v. Ferguson or Dred Scott when they said that they respected that sorry decisis. Well, if those are examples, so Roe and Casey would be equally susceptible to reevaluation as Plessy, would you agree? Well, and in fact, they certainly could be and be further expanded, and they have been. So one of the things we haven't talked about is that there is whole women's health v. Hellerstead, and even just a couple years ago, June Medical v. Rousseau, which this Supreme Court used to further uphold the principles of Roe v. Wade and also Planned Parenthood v. Casey. I yield back. My time's expired.